The course of history is driven by technological advances. Bronze and iron were so vital to ancient people that they have entire eras named after them. Railroad tracks spanned from the Atlantic to Pacific during the rise of the American steel industry. The greatest leap in information technology after the printing press was silicon semiconductors, which enabled the burst of growth of computers. Society and technology we have today were shaped by these materials. This new wonder material, graphene, has the scientific community in uproar, publishing thousands of articles, research and trying to understand it. Graphite seems almost fictitious, like something from a comic book with its extensive list of properties. Stronger than steel, lighter than paper and a better conductor than copper. Think of a pencil lead which consists of graphite. Graphite is millions of layers of graphene stacked onto each other. But my pencil tip easily breaks when I apply too much pressure. How is graphene the strongest material? To understand this, let's consider graphite, diamonds and buckyballs, which are all known as allotropes of carbon. An allotrope is built up from the same atom, but organized in different structures, which gives the material different properties. Graphene is a single layer of carbon atoms that are arranged in a honeycomb lattice. Only when a graphene layer is separated from graphite does it show its magical properties. In 2004, at the University of Manchester, Andre Geim and Konstantin Novoselov discovered the first single layer sample of graphene. This discovery was made by using a roll of scotch tape. While cleaning a block of graphite using the tape, they noticed small flakes on the tape. They continued to stick and peel the tape until they were left with a sample size as thin as possible. The odd discovery left the scientific community doubtful and a paper on the experiment was rejected. Later on, Geim and Novoselov published their work and received several awards for their pioneering research on graphene, notably the 2010 Nobel Prize in Physics. In short, graphene is the strongest, lightest, most thermal and electrically conductive material. Let's investigate the properties of graphene and see how it compares to current leading materials. Graphene is the thinnest material ever, only consisting of a single layer of atoms. It is known as a two-dimensional material, whereas all other materials we know are three-dimensional, with a length, width and height. Even paper has a height of around 0.1 millimeters. To understand the scale of this 2D material, let's consider a carbon atom with a diameter of roughly 0.33 nanometers. One millimeter consists of a million nanometers. So in order to get a graphene layer with the same thickness of the paper, you need to add 300,000 graphene layers onto each other. Graphene is the first ever 2D material and many new ones have already been discovered. Due to the nanoscale of a graphene layer, it is also very light at 0.77 milligrams per meter squared. A single sheet of graphene covering the entire area of a football pitch would weigh less than one gram. It has a tensile strength of 130 gigapascals and is about 200 times stronger than structural steel with a tensile strength of roughly 600 megapascals. Graphene is also extremely flexible and can stretch up to 20% of its initial size without breaking. Even helium atoms cannot pass through a layer of graphene, making it highly impermeable to most gases and liquids. Graphene is also an excellent electrical conductor. Electrical resistivity of 1 times 10 to the power of negative 8 ohm meters makes it about 35% less resistive than copper. In addition, graphene is also a better thermal conductor than copper and is almost five times better at conducting heat at room temperature. 97.3% transmittance makes graphene transparent and opens a new range of possibilities. The strong mechanical properties of graphene combined with its low mass makes it a good option as a reinforcing agent in composites. Body structures manufactured from composites containing graphene will be lightweight vehicles, aircraft and even spacecraft will be more fuel efficient, stronger and safer. Tennis rackets, skis, bicycle wheels and frames and sports glasses have been enhanced with graphene and are available on the market. Graphene enhanced bulletproof vests and ballistic plates are also being manufactured for the Royal Thai Army. The two-dimensional structure of the material lets electrons move through it at virtually the speed of light. By replacing silicon-based transistors, computers have the potential to be thousands of times faster. Electronics will be able to operate at high frequencies, enabling terahertz computing. 
The downside to this is that graphene is semi-metallic and lacks the band gap to serve as a transistor. A high thermal conductivity makes graphene a very good option for heat dissipation. Due to rapidly increasing power densities in electronics, managing the resulting heat has become one of the most critical issues in computer and semiconductor design. The iPhone Nano case uses a graphene film to dissipate excess heat inside the phone rapidly. Huawei also uses this technology built into their new smartphones. Stretchable electronics, a technology aiming to produce circuits on flexible plastic, can also see a big leap forward. This will be used for applications such as bendable solar cells or artificial skin. Graphene will impact four major energy-related fields. It shows promise for making solar cells that are inexpensive, lightweight and flexible. Activated graphene can be used as superconductors for energy storage. Superconductors are materials that can conduct electricity or transport electrons from one atom to another with no resistance. For rechargeable batteries, we can expect to see improved battery capacity and reduced charge rates. Grabat is producing batteries with graphene polymer cells that have increased capacity, shorter charge times and are lighter than their lithium-ion counterparts. The high surface area of graphene and good conductivity makes it an astounding low-cost catalyst material for fuel cells. Development of graphene-based biosensors for the detection of small biomolecules, proteins and DNA you can easily make graphene on your own by taking a pencil and sticking some sticky tape to the graphite and peel it away. You'll get a layer of graphite made up of many layers of graphene. Repeat the process over and over again and you'll end up with a layer so thin it'll contain just one layer of atoms. This rough method of producing graphene is called mechanical exfoliation. This method is suitable for producing small graphene samples in a lab but it is not the solution to industry-scale graphene production. Using a method called chemical vapour deposition can produce a larger amount of graphene. A gas such as methane is put into a closed container onto a substrate such as copper. It is heated until a layer of graphene is formed on the substrate. Recently, experiments have been done with a method called flash joule heating. A capacitor bank is used to zap carbon powder with high voltage electricity, heating it to more than 2998 Kelvin in less than 100 milliseconds. This produces high quality graphene, which is low in defects. In addition, flash graphene can be made from nearly anything with carbon in it, such as plastic, wood, rubber and coal. The higher the carbon content, the easier it is to convert into graphene. Until thus far, graphene has been relatively expensive to make, imperfectly produced with lots of defects, and difficult to scale. Of course, with any new technology, the reality is it generally takes years to develop it. It would be unreasonable to expect graphene to transform our lives overnight.